start today's program. I'm Don Rissmiller. I get to chair the Global Interdependence Center for this year and next year. I'm very happy to have that role, and I'm very happy to welcome everyone here today. So let me make one point of order. You may see there's a pencil sitting in front of you. It is not sharpened. <laughs> this is on purpose. It's not because we're not trying to make a point. It's because this is a prop for a future uh, part of the program. So please keep that around. And if we need some other writing utensils, we can work on that. But one of our first orders of business here today is to tell you a little about GIC. Many are familiar. But the Global Interdependence Center started around 1976 when there was a large celebration of American independence going on. And it was some forward-looking individuals, some here, who said, if we're going to celebrate independence, shouldn't we also talk about interdependence? I think that was very prescient at that time because for the next generation, interdependence has become very important. And today, it's more in question than it's been for some time. So we're happy everyone has been able to join us. I think we have a good program and we'll be able to let everyone take something uh, away that they might not have known as we got started here today. And that's the goal of the organization, to not take a view, but to provide a neutral space for dialogue, conversation, and to let everyone learn something. So our second order of business today, and it falls to me, is to present our Global Citizen Award. And I've been able to work with Peter Gold for a number of years. It's been instrumental over the last year that I've helped lead the organization here. But Peter has a long history with the Global Interdependence Center. And this award, the Global Citizen Award, is given to individuals who have provided substantial support to GIC and its mission. And recipients have demonstrated in their business or personal lives a commitment to the principles of the Declaration of Interdependence and have been strong advocates of GIC's efforts in the development of worldwide communities and increased knowledge, understanding, and partnership. So Peter fits this perfectly. Peter's the founder and president of the Gold Group. It's a consultancy that has brought business and university and government and not-for-profits together to look at opportunities, to leverage assets, and to reduce exposures created to the risks in today's global economy. Peter's done work in many places. He has clients in Arizona and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, Switzerland, and he's worked in many different industries. He's created a roadmap for a new aerospace collaboratory. He's worked on vehicular supply chains. He's worked on communications. He's worked on health science. And so it's a great honor for me to present this award, our Global Citizen Award, to Peter Gold to recognize more than a decade of service to GIC, his conferences that have included work on education, work on energy in both this area and in the Southwest. So please, Peter, let me present you. The Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, especially those folks who have not uh, been at GIC uh, functions previously. So so wonderful for you to be here, and thank you. Um, 
I guess uh, my remarks will not be uh, extensive, but uh, I did want to share one or two thoughts with you. Uh, I uh, began with the GIC in around 2004, and um, uh, since then it's just been a total uh, joy in every single aspect of it. Um, I'm sort of, uh, especially at our event, sort of frequently asked, what is global interdependence anyway, and why am I, Peter, interested and involved in global interdependence? Um, well, I look at it this way. Just pure definition. Country A depends or relies on country B for something or someone, and country B, in turn, depends or relies on country C's products or human assets, and on and on and on in the global interdependence chain. Example, we all have uh, several examples. One of them, for instance, very simple, your smartphone. Japanese can't deliver on its contract to produce the device without obtaining chips, usually made in the U.S. or China. I think my Michael's going to maybe telling us a little bit more about that later today. The chip manufacturers in those countries in turn require the materials, copper, silica, other things, mined in Argentina or Peru uh, to produce the chips and so on. A low-tech example, and here's the pencil, a low-tech example is the pencil. So this morning, uh, I bought 72 of these pencils for $10. That's about 14 cents for this pencil. The wood comes from the US, the graphite from Germany, the metal at the top is mined in Peru, and the rubber comes from Asia. And that's not even getting into uh, the uh, insurance, financial planning, overhead costs, logistics, other transportation, yet this is sitting here for 14 cents a pencil. How did it get here for 14 cents a pencil? In many ways, that's what the Global Interdependence Center is about, and that's what global interdependence is. So take your pencils back and look at it and say, boy, a 14 cent pencil, that's absolutely amazing. It is to me, I have to tell you. My final example requires a bit of audience participation. So here it comes. Pick up that pencil and grasp it. Pick it up, grasp that pencil, keep holding it. This is the final example. The person holding that pencil is deeply affected by global interdependence, just like the pencil is. So each of you sitting here are global citizens, whether you know it or not. So we're globally independent in several areas, including economic interdependence, environmental interdependence, political interdependence, social, cultural, and human interdependence, professional interdependence, personal interdependence. Turning to today and the future, I suggest that nothing is more interdependent than big data, machine learning, and super artificial intelligence. Today's machines are writing algorithms that human beings do not understand, with or without the assistance of other machines. It wouldn't surprise me if FinTech and AI were even more prominent in GIC activities and programming in the future. Uh, as Don said, the mission of Global Independence Center is to host programs and provide a platform for activities relating to peoples and countries and their reliance and dependence on each other. So you can see, for those of you, particularly those of you who know me, this is my passion, this is my life. So it meshes quite nicely with Global Independence and that's why I'm involved with the Global Independence Center. I'm also involved with the Global Independence Center because all of the programs, every single one of them without a miss since my start of involvement in 2004, has been done in a professional and distinguished first class manner. That's pretty tough to pull off when you're doing 15 programs a year. So uh, I'm very happy certainly to be part of that. I am so honored by being selected as the recipient of the Global Citizen Award. When we were discussing this the other night at home, uh, my daughter Katie, who's here today, and thank you for coming, and Marty, thank you for being here, asked me, Dad, what does it mean to you to receive this award? 
because I had written something and whatever she wrote it, read it and said, Dad, what does it mean to you to receive this award? And, and I told her that I am particularly humbled when one considers the quality of the GIC distinguished programs, speakers, prior award recipients, and the commitment of its board members, advisory board members, and its sponsors. Uh, now, it, and, and I am so happy to have been able to advance the mission of the GIC and taken a role in doing that so that we could reach other people in other countries and people here in the United States. Now, if you permit me, I'd like to recognize and thank a few of our specific global citizens. First, our executive committee, Don, Michael, George, Martin, Kathleen, here today. They have an unparalleled commitment to the Global Interdependence Center. I'd also like to recognize Colleen Murphy, our Manager of Marketing and Communications, and Jill Fornito, our Executive Director. Without them, I could not do what I do for the GIC, and they have a true commitment to excellence. Just to note, this is Jill's 10th year anniversary uh, with the GIC. Sorry to embarrass you. I know I'm going to hear about this later. Uh, she is truly superb and the best, and thank you, Jill, for all you do on behalf of the organization. Two more, two more specific sets of folks that I'm almost done. I'd also like to recognize and thank David Kotak and Bill Dunkelberg. Bill is here today, and David couldn't make it, but uh, I'm sure he'll hear about this. Both prior Global Citizen Award recipients, by the way. They recruited me to the board, and whether they know it or not, they were and are GIC mentors, teaching me through their actions more about what it means to be a global citizen. So thank you. Thank you. Finally, last but not least, my family, Marty, Katie, Emma, and Jen. Uh, I have been and truly am dependent and interdependent on you. Thank you so much for your loving, constant support, understanding, and help. In closing, no matter what the specific themes of the conferences I've chaired for the GIC over the years, whether it be energy, manufacturing, higher education, my closing remarks have included three wishes or hopes. So I'll close with them here as well. One, I hope that we've provided a distinguished high value forum to discuss important issues. Two, I hope that you would agree that discussions today and at each of our conferences, no matter what the specific conference topic, has really been about the quality of life, the quality of human life. And three, I hope that after today, each of you stay engaged with the GIC, its mission, activity, and members, and even think about becoming a member if you're not one already. So my fellow global citizens, I profoundly thank you, and let's get on with the program. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Small problem. We can skip that part. Okay. I guess they decided that the river named the devil was not the proper background for me. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Drury. I'm a Chairman Emeritus of the Global Interdependence Center, and it is a pleasure for me uh, to be here today to announce uh, one of our initiatives, the Global Interdependence Center's uh, College of Central Bankers. This is a program we've been working in development on for a number of years. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work alongside Peter Gold, who is one of the, uh, the driving forces behind uh, putting together this initiative, uh, and many others in the room, uh, too many to, to uh, 
announce, but I mean, you all know who you are, so we all thank you. Uh, it's uh, especially a pleasure, uh, I, I don't, where is he here? Herb Taylor, who is uh, a longtime GIC member and a liaison between us and uh, the central banking world. I'd like to particularly thank him. Uh, the purpose of this new initiative is to, to sustain the relationship that GIC has with central bankers around the world. And you can read in your uh, in your pamphlets there uh, a long, detailed uh, description of what GIC is. But to me, uh, GIC and the College of Central Bankers, GIC at its heart is a network. And central to that network is uh, the Central Banking Series, which we've done for at least the, uh, the uh, 10 years that I've been involved with GIC, and before that with uh, Bill Dunkelberg and David Kotak for at least 15 years, I guess, uh, going back. Uh, this is where I met GIC, was at a global uh, banking center conference in Singapore in 2008, I believe, or I can't remember. Uh, but th the point here is that there's a very strong relationship between GIC and central bankers, both inside the United States and around the world. And part of what the College of Central Bankers is, is to solidify that in that that doesn't stop just when they stop working at the central banks. I mean, that they're a part of the fabric of GIC. Many of them have been speakers for us before, during, after. Some have been central bankers, went back to business, went back to central banking again. So they're, they're part of the fabric of GIC, and I really think that uh, the college is to, to uh, both reward them, to honor them, but to, to show that they're part of us and that we really welcome them. Whoop, sorry. Well, it must be that important phone call from, uh, you know, Cattysburg, Tennessee, that's uh, <laughs> telling me that my insurance is paid up, but don't worry. No. Uh, sorry for that uh, commercial break, but um, I am pleased uh, to share with you today our three inaugural members of GIC. Some of their bios are in the uh, in the, the uh, pamphlet. Uh, William Poole, Bill Poole, the former president of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Uh, Christian Waye, the former governor of the Banque de France. And with us here today, Anthony Santamero, Tony Santamero, the former president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. And I might point out our second global citizen. Uh, and we have a plaque here today. Tony, a citizenship, a certificate of membership in the Global Center. Would you come up and just, uh, we have a camera, we take a picture. All right. We have a meeting flashing through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for the award. Uh, in addition, I'd like to announce that one of our GIC board members uh, who has admired the central banking program for years has uh, agreed to kick this off with an initial contribution of $4,000 dedicated to the College of uh, Central Bankers. The funding for the college is going to be used uh, to support uh, travel and uh, presentations by uh, the various uh, central bank members and uh, for research, for, for other items that are of interest to them. So anybody who's interested in not just contributing to GIC, but to this particular initiative, uh, the more the merrier is all I can say. Uh, and finally, I am happy to share with you the new logo of the, uh, do the big unveil here. <laughs> there we go. Very nice. You'll see this on a lot of our documentation from now on. So uh, I thank you all, and I'll turn it back over to, uh, to Don, and we'll move on with our program. Yes.